Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this video, I'm going to show you another way to use wafer paper. This time, we are going to use it to add texture vertically on a cake. And I'm also using a little bit of spatula buttercream. And I'm going to show you how to make these abstract leaf cake toppers. We're going to start by putting a the final layer of buttercream on our top tier. Now this cake is already pre-filled and crumb coated uh, just to save time. And then, um, yeah, this is my American buttercream and it's a bubble free recipe most of the time. Sometimes it does not work that way. I do not understand why, but 99.9% .9 of the time it does. And I will, um, it does not have bubbles. So I will leave a link to where you can get that recipe in the description and I'll try to add a a uh, iCard on the video so that you can get to that tutorial. So we're just smoothing out that buttercream as much as we can and then bringing that lip in from the top. Now I'm going to color my wafer paper and for this I'm using a petal dust. Actually it's like um, a luster dust and I added that to some warmed up coconut oil. I just put it in the microwave long enough to just make it a thin consistency, maybe 10 seconds. Then added that luster dust to that, that um, coconut oil, and I'm using that to add color to my wafer paper. Wafer paper can be a little bit hard to color, and in doing this, it's less splotchy. Sometimes when you add color just by dry dusting on the powder, it can be a little splotchy, but if you add it with the coconut oil, it does leave a little bit of a film of that coconut oil, but it gives you a more solid color. And for this application, I find that it was perfect. And then I am just cutting them into one inch strips. I'm using my self-healing mat and a quilting ruler to cut this in one inch strips. You can do them however wide you want. I just went with an inch because it's easy to cut with the mat. The lines are already marked on there. And we're just gonna set those aside until we're ready to use them. But we're, for the video's purposes, we're gonna jump right to applying them on. And I'm just using some piping gel. I brushed some on the cake, a little bit thinned down with, with just a little bit of water. And then I'm using just out of the jar, the um, piping gel on the edge of the wafer paper strips because you have such a little bit of area to attach for of the wafer paper to attach to the fondant. And yes, this is a, a pre-fondant covered cake. Um, this is an 8 inch bottom tier. No, I believe this is probably a 7 inch bottom tier and the top tier is a 6 inch round. But yes, using the piping gel to attach it to the fondant. Now the fondant had already been done and it had already firmed up so I didn't have to worry about messing with the finish of that. You could actually color the fondant if you want to. I just wanted it to be a little bit kind of um, transparent kind of looking. I wanted it to be more... I guess airy. I'm, there's a word that I'm looking for and I'm not finding it, but I didn't want it to be too solid of the green color because um, as you'll notice in the title of this video, um, this was not meant to be an Easter cake. <laughs> Although it does look that way, so we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go with Easter in August. That's what we're doing. It's not Christmas in July, it's Easter in August. <laughs> and there is one side all done and then I'm jumping to having all of the pieces on. Now I know these are a little longer than the cake but I will go in and trim them down to size once it has set up. And once you get these on you're going to put them in your refrigerator for probably I would say maybe two to three hours before trimming them because for the same reason since there's very little area of this um, wafer paper attached to the cake you need to make sure that it has firmed up enough, dried up enough so that they don't fall off when you're cutting them down to size. And while that's happening, we're gonna jump to those abstract leaf shapes. These are just, I'm just making these out of floral wire, just floral wire. Sometimes, you know, use what you have on hand sometimes. Just doesn't, doesn't have to be so um, intricate. Sometimes just the appearance of something, the outline shape of it gives the look that you're looking for. And I just drew out a template for the basic shape. And then I'm just using my floral wire. You could use any gauge you wanted. I used, I think it was 20 gauge wire because I wanted it to be thick enough that you actually see them. If you go too thin, you might not even actually notice they're there. 
and I'm just using that template that I drew out to um, bend the wire into the shape that I'm wanting. You could do that with any shape, really. And I'm just twisting the ends together. And since this is floral wire, you could wrap floral tape around it if you want to. Let me jump get to this though. I'm just using the same luster dust to color the um, the we're gonna just call them leaves, the wire leaves. And I did go in because it's very vibrant green, and I did go in and add some pearl luster dust later on I don't show that but I did add that because it was so vibrant and I know I lost track of what I was saying but I want to explain what I'm doing here to do the buttercream petals I'm just taking a thin layer of buttercream using my spatula my pointed spatula your offset painting spatula and you kind of scrape the buttercream into the bottom part of it so that you have the thickness of it is in the middle and then just gently place it on and pull away. That's all you do. And you could use different shapes, different sizes of spatulas and get different looks. But I'm just randomly placing these. I had a direction that I wanted to, to go in mind, kind of wrapped around that top edge. And then with some petals, just single petals by themselves and then some leaves. So I'm using the same color of green and the buttercream to add some leaves. And then for the centers, I'm just using some small dragées. I just dip my finger in water and then dip them in the dragées. You do, that's off camera, but that's what I did first in the water, then in the dragées, and that's an easy way to transfer it onto the cake. Now, yes, I do not have gloves on, but these cakes are not for orders. If you wanted to wear gloves, if you're doing these for an order, that's fine. Same thing with sticking these flowers into the cake. I did do a little bit of buttercream, but if you were doing this for an order, I would actually wrap those ends with floral tape and then add some a bigger dollop of buttercream. That's how I would do it for an actual order. This is for demonstrations purposes, but I want you to know what I what to do if you're actually doing this for an order. Same with those stems. You could add a straw into the cake and then add your leaves in as well for more safety. There are products out there that um, you can dip your stems in to make them food safe. I can't remember what it's called. I've never used it. Mm, I'm just not recalling it right this moment, but if I think of it, I'll try to add a link to that. That makes your stems food safe. You could always go that route. And here I took the cake out of the refrigerator. It was nice and firmed up, and I am just cutting off the excess. Now, if you have a humid fridge, I would not put the uh, wafer paper in a humid fridge. I like my residential fridge for the fact that it's less humid. I have worked with res um, commercial fridges and they're so humid and it really makes cake decorating a little harder, I find. So I use my residential fridge. If you don't have one of those, you can just go ahead and leave it at room temperature and it will dry that way too. And just cut off the excess, cut it down to size, and then I'm adding my bubble tea straws. I am cutting it down to the length there on the first one and then I'm showing you how I'm holding them up to use as a guide to cut all of the straws the same length so that your top tier is level. Then I just put push those all the way in there and then I'm adding a little bit of buttercream over the ends of the straws so that the top tier does not slide off and I'm just loosening it up with my um, offset spatula this tier had been in the freezer for about 10 minutes and I don't typically assemble with the flowers on. I usually do that last. I don't, I cannot tell you why I did that. <laughs> I just kept going with decorating that top tier and I just went with it. So that's a little weird, but it worked. And see there is our finished product. It is all the spring colors unintentionally and it looks like grass on the bottom. I get it. Well, we'll just go with it, people. Just go with it. I hope you liked it, and I hope you decide to give this technique a try. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.